What's going on you guys, ZKP Outdoorsman here, and welcome back to the ZKP Outdoorsman channel, guys, and thank you all for joining me here tonight, guys, and, and I know it's been a while since I post any Outdoorsman videos for you guys, and um, here tonight, guys, I'm going to be uh, doing a, a, a video reaction on a video here about the surviving in the woods in the wilderness, uh, 20 steps to survive in the wilderness. I hope y'all enjoy this uh, video reaction, guys, here tonight, guys. And uh, let's get this show on the road. All right, here we go. We're going to start this off with one of the most useful things you're going to find in the woods, and that is pine sap. Well, technically it's called resin, but you can call it whatever you want to call it. Wow. Either way, it's very useful stuff, and you can do all kinds of things with it. Pine trees release this anytime they experience an injury to seal off the wound from any infections. See and you can got, harvest it yourself when it's fresh to use on your own cuts and scrapes for the same purpose. It has antibacterial properties, and since it's sticky, it can help stop bleeding as well. It's kind of like nature's liquid band. Bandage and neosporin. It also happens to be highly flammable, which makes it great for helping you to get fires going, especially in wet conditions because it'll burn even if it's wet. Here I found a large chunk of it that I'm going to place on top of this pile of dryer lint, which also makes great tinder. This large chunk of pine sap will burn long and hot and will do a good job of drying out these damp sticks that I'm placing on top. It makes great torches, which can be used as a portable light source at night or if you need to signal for help. It can be difficult to ignite pine resin with a ferrocerium rod, but it can be done by finding an older dry chunk of resin like this one and crushing it into a powder like I'm doing here with the back of my knife and just start throwing sparks at it. It might take a little while to ignite it, but eventually it'll ignite. You can also use pine resin to make a temporary waterproof patch for tents, tarps, rubber boots, or rain jackets like this one. I have a small so hole in this rain jacket, so I'm going to gather up some fresh pine resin. The, Just work it on there over the hole, hole until it seals. You might tent. have to add a second clump that to it. It'll work best when it's fresh. Especially. And this will create a waterproof patch. So I'm going to take this thing to the stream, fill it see up, that, and guys. see if it holds water. And it's looking good. No water leaking through. You can see the patch I made there. Yeah, that's, you can make portable that is, fire that starters awesome, that you can yeah, keep in your pack cool. for future fire making by wrapping pine resin with cedar bark so that they won't stick to anything and so that you can ignite it easier with sparks. After I've processed a strip of cedar bark into finer fibers, I'm going to put the pine resin inside and roll it up. Now you can light it with a lighter or give it some sparks from a ferro rod. This will burn pretty hot for about five or six minutes, depending on how much pine resin you use. These are wow. great for helping you to start fires, especially in windy or wet conditions. Imagine wood that is soaked in oil or kerosene, and that is what fat wood burns like. It can be found in dead pine branches. The section of the dead branch that is closest that to the trunk of the tree, especially. known as pine knots, will be saturated with flammable pine resin. And if you don't have a saw with you, you can break off small branches with your foot or your hand as close to the trunk of the tree as you can get. It's very easy to light. It'll burn for a long time. So it's really good for starting fires and it's windproof. I have a stick of fat wood here that I'm gonna dunk in this stream just to demonstrate mm. how it lights even when it's wet. To ignite it with a ferrocerium rod, you wanna scrape very fine shavings off with the back of your knife or with a scraper. Then I'm gonna slice off some slightly bigger shavings with my knife and it lights right away. So Great guys, stuff. Though, you can make long lasting candles like the one I'm gonna make. When you find some wood that's that wet and stuff, you can do earlier. stuff like that. Make a split that, in the top about the a third of the way down or so. Keep it propped stick, open with a wood, twig. Wood shavings on and then stick do the same and thing in the opposite up. direction, crisscrossing the first split. And this is what it's gonna look like. Almost like a miniature Swedish torch. And then I'm gonna take my Zippo lighter, a good wind resistant alternative to the Bic lighter. And then I'm gonna light my candle. Now you have a long-lasting, wind-proof candle for some light around the campsite, which also has a lovely natural pine scent to it. You can make a larger version of this with a longer stick to use as a torch. As y'all can see, guys, 
if y'all are watching this, some of that sap you can use for cuts and stuff on your hands and stuff. That'll definitely help help stop bleeding and stuff. That's that's definitely key for some of y'all outdoorsmen that that know or some of y'all that don't know. That's definitely something to something to learn from when you're in the wilderness. Survive trying to survive and stuff. All right, let's continue on to the sh video. This particular torch I made lasted me about an hour. So you're gonna get a long burn time out of these. And if you need to put this out, find some water and dunk it. It'll burn while it's raining, but it won't burn underwater. Make a stealth fire, also known as the Dakota fire hole. Dig two holes next to each other and then connect them underground with a smaller hole. The fire is gonna go in this hole and as the fire burns, it's gonna pull in fresh air from the air intake hole, which is best See to that, be gosh. placed upwind of the fire hole. Wow. So I'm gonna get a fire going in here and once the fire gets going and gets nice and hot, it's gonna burn very efficiently and put out very little smoke. This is a very good option if you want a fire, but you don't want your location to be known. Because as you can see, I'm walking up towards the fire, but I can't see it unless I'm right next to it. Just be sure to watch your step and don't fall into it. You could twist your ankle and burn your boot at the same time, and that's not good. It's also a very efficient way to cook food and heat up water compared to a normal fire. Think of it as kind of a rocket stove in the ground. And once you're ready to put the fire out, all you have to do is fill the hole back up with dirt. And you're good to go. It's almost like you were never there. A couple ways to modify your big lighter. Wrap it with duct tape. Besides its obvious uses, duct tape also happens to be very flammable. So now you have a fire starter and a lighter in one. I like to make kind of a hollow tube out of it and give it a light. This will burn for a few minutes. It's also a good idea to pry off the child safety guard that's on the striker wheel. And this makes for much easier striking for if you ever lose dexterity in your fingers from the cold. One of the best natural tinders you're going to find in the wild is birch bark. The bark contains oil that makes it waterproof and highly flammable. I'm scraping fine shavings off the outer layer with my knife because I'm going to pair it with cattail fluff, which makes a great combination for if you ever have to start a fire with an empty lighter. The cattail fluff takes a very small spark, turns it into a flame, but it goes out really fast, so I need the fine shavings of birch bark to catch the flame and extend it. So I'm going to take my broken, empty Bic lighter, and all I'm going to do is Give it a spark. Make sure the cattail seed heads are fluffed up really good so that they catch a spark more easily. And this can be added to your larger tinder bundle. If no other tinder is available, you can always use your sock. Well, that's a good one. Take your knife and start shaving off wow. the sock lint off of your sock and it'll make a great tinder that will take a spark from your ferrocerium rod pretty easily. If you heat up a section of birch bark it makes it easier to bend without breaking it. And I'm going to use this to make a makeshift water filter. This is a good way to filter heavy sediment out of your water. Bend your birch bark into a funnel and take a piece of clothing like this cotton t-shirt I have here and I'm going to place this into the funnel. Now all this is going to do is filter out the sediment. It's not going to purify the water, which is why I'm letting this drip straight into my metal pot because I'm going to have to boil the water afterwards anyways. And as you can see, this does a pretty good job of filtering out all that nasty sediment from the water. And it's almost crystal clear now. Like I said, you still have to boil this. And it is recommended to boil water for at least a minute, a good rolling boil. And you can see all the yeah, nasty gosh. mud and sediment that I filtered out of it. If you have long branches but no saw and you need smaller pieces, find two trees right next to each other and put your stick in between the two. Use it as leverage and just pull straight back until the branch guys, breaks. That's what I had to do. Stay like have that big, to break. Messy pile of logs. Like that to my and an easy way to transport them is to take off your belt, pile all the logs onto it, and strap them up. Now you have a log carrier, which actually works pretty you, well. You hear that, guys? Carry your logs with one hand and hold your pants up with the other. Cattail seed fluff is very compacted in the seed head, but if you break them open, they fluff up really good. 
You already seen me use this as tinder, but there's another use for it. If you're stuck out in the cold without the proper clothing on, you can use this as insulation. It acts just like goose down to keep you insulated from the cold. The more fluffy they are in your shirt, the better they're going to insulate you. Feeling nice and toasty. Say your lighter gets wet. When a lighter gets wet, needless to say, it's not going to light. So first thing you want to do is shake it a bunch of times as hard as you can. Get all that water out of there. And then blow down into the top of it a few times to push out any remaining water. And then you want to remove the safety guard that sits on top of the striker wheel. Pry it off with something away from you because this thing can really shoot off of there. If you poke your eye out, you're going to have bigger problems. And then you want to take the lighter, hold it upside down, and roll it back and forth on your pants a bunch of times. Hear that, guys? You, you just want to keep doing this over and over again until the lighter water. is dry enough to work. Now there's another way to do this if you're worried about wearing down the lighter's ferrocerium rod. Take the lighter and dry out the striker wheel with your shirt, turning the wheel as you go. And then that'll dry it out pretty quick. I hope you guys learned a lot on this uh, vlog here, guys. And uh, I appreciate y'all watching tonight. Thank you for joining me here. and. Um, I'm glad y'all learned a lot on this vlog here, guys, on the Outdoorsman video here about survival tips, how to survive in the wilderness like that, how to use branches, use, I mean, use, especially use two trees together to, to break off the big sticks to make, to build up a fire, to make, to get firewood, I mean, and, and use a, what that guy showing you to carry your wood and stuff. You have a wood carrier. That that was definitely amazing. What amazed me was, especially the uh, where you, if you get cut, that little sap stuff from a tree you can use as a wound to uh, cover up your um, your cut, keep you keep stop bleeding, bleeding and stuff. That's what was my most favorite. And especially the fire when you're digging a, a hole and stuff, and you dig a hole in the middle where you make your fire and always make sure if after you camp, you, you cover your trace when you're camping so nobody will know you've been camping there and stuff. And, and that's that's definitely most important when you're when you're camping too, which I've tried, which I've been, I don't think I've often mentioned on, the, on these outdoorsman videos that I've told you guys, but this, it is very important to, to cover to to clean up your trace and stuff, make sure so you nobody will know you've camped there. And um, well, guys, I'm glad you joined this vlog here, guys. Thank you for joining me here tonight, guys. Thank you for watching, and and no doubt like and subscribe for more ZKP Outdoorsman videos and vlogs and adventures like these. I'm gonna be putting more out, and hope on the next vlog we'll be doing a a mowing a mowing vlog for you guys and. Uh, and hopefully, 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 one day we'll go on another outdoorsman adventure and stuff. And which I'll be plan. I know I'm like to plan it, plan it. But hope you guys learned a lot on this vlog here, guys. On the on the survival tips on the on the reaction video. But I hope y'all enjoyed it and. Uh, and I will talk to you all later, and God bless, and happy outdoors. Bye.